The king who weed in a cave. Some of us want to be pop stars. Some want to fly to the moon. Some will design and build bridges and some might create a cartoon. But one man's dream was fairly different. Once sparked, it never faded. For all King Saul was determined to do was to hunt down and kill David. Now David was a special man who brought God so much joy. God picked him from a handsome bunch when he was just a boy. Lots of tales we could tell of how he found his fame, his shepherding, his songwriting, his giant killing aim, or how he came to work for Saul as part of God's big plan and how Saul became jealous of God's favor on this man. So stricken with this jealousy, King Saul devised a plan. I'll gather up 3,000 men and find and kill that man. So David's on the run from Saul like grown-up hide and seek. But David knows if he gets found, he really is dead meat. But David looked to God to check that he would be protected. And God did always keep him safe when danger was detected. David knew he was the mouse and Saul the big fat cat. But mice can find good hiding places. David did just that. He tiptoed in the darkest cave. His men said, anyone there? Once sure that it was safe inside, they said a thank you prayer. They walked quite far into the cave and gave their legs a rest. They spread their bags out everywhere. They weren't expecting guests. Outside, Saul's army marched on strong through forest, field and stream. We must find David's hiding place. To kill him is my dream. But Saul was rather fidgety and no one knew quite why. I cannot hold it anymore. I need the toilet. Bye. He found a place a little dark. Oh, I'm not scared. I'm brave. But one thing that Saul didn't know was he picked David's cave. He weed upon their sleeping bags. He weed upon their snacks. He carelessly weed on their shoes and on their new backpacks. What's that noise, said David's men. A stream, a waterfall. But then they smelt it. Oh, that's we. But shh, I think that's Saul. It was so dark there in that cave and Saul was all alone. You might say it was David's chance to kill him and go home. But David was a smarter man. A plan came to his mind. A fight is not a fight if you just sneak up from behind. But this is what I'll do to show Saul just how close he came. And David chopped the corner from his coat to cause him shame. But God said not to hurt Saul. Plus David deep down knew to chop at other people's clothes was not the thing to do. So David put the scissors down and just as Saul went off, he ran out of the cave and said, Saul, wait, I'm David, stop. Well, Saul was shocked and scared and stunned. His men were not nearby. Please spare me, David, though I'm old, I'm far too young to die. But David said, I cannot harm you, Saul. God told me so. But why do you wish harm on me? When will you let it go? I could have killed you in that cave and here I hold the proof. I cut your coat, but nothing more. That's God's plan, that's the truth. When faced with death, it's said that your whole life goes flashing by. But Saul saw just one thing, that David was a special guy. I'm sorry that I chased you and you don't deserve to die. I cannot promise that I will change, but I promise to try. I'm sorry that I cut your coat. I'll sew it up for you. There is no need, for I'm just glad I didn't need a... I'll only do wheeze in the toilet from this day forth, I swear. I don't want someone else to see my swipey underwear. Now you might think David a hero who did not a single thing wrong, but just a few years later, he wrote a sorry song. God forgives you when you say sorry. If you mean it deep down, there's no doubt. For King David did a couple of naughty things, which you can ask your parents about. Well, who'd have thought Saul and David would ever become real friends? Well, actually, you'll have to read a bit more to see exactly where this story ends.